When Matt Bevan raised his hand in a private ceremony in December of 2015 to take the oath of office, he immediately inherited a very public and growing problem. Kentucky had the third highest overdose rate in America. Well, Governor, first, thanks for sitting down with us. You're very welcome. Nearly two years later, the opioid crisis is a full-blown epidemic, and it's being met with the full weight of the governor's mansion. I literally know people who have lost loved ones. I have extended members of even my own family who have been drip, gripped by addiction. So I have seen it up close and personal, but I've seen people bury their children, bury their fathers and mothers, and, 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 and it's at a, at, for reasons that are hard for anyone to understand. It's heartbreaking to me. The nature of an opioid addiction, it, it's less than a 1% chance that a person's gonna save themselves from this. They've got to have help from the outside world. There has to be some extenuating circumstance on the part of somebody else that's gonna intervene to help to save them. There has to be involvement from a community, from the government. In August of 2017, Governor Bevin signed into law a new bill designed to fight the opioid epidemic, one of which limits physicians to prescribing only a three-day supply of opioids at a time, with exceptions made for things such as chronic illness. Kentucky is the first state in the nation to pass such a stringent opioid law. No other state comes close to this, and yet the CDC has shown year after year, guideline after guideline, that the path to addiction begins after about five years, or five days. So anybody with more than a five-day prescription is more likely to go down a path where they can become addicted. 80 plus percent of all people addicted to heroin and to opioids started that addiction on prescription medication by abusing a prescription medication. Maybe not intending to from the beginning, but very few people, less than 20%, start using heroin or some of these other hard drugs. They start with a prescription. So why would we not limit then that pathway to addiction if five days is the point at which people start down that path of addiction? Why not limit the initial dose to three days? Last year in Kentucky, there were 359 million doses of opioids prescribed. 359 million pills that were prescribed legally by doctors in this state to Kentuckians of an opioid nature. We have 4.4 million people. That's about 79 pills for every man, woman, and child in this state. We're not in that much pain. Clearly, there's a problem. The governor also signed a bill increasing penalties for people trafficking in drugs like fentanyl and carfentanil. Van Ingram is the executive director of the Kentucky Office of Drug Control Policy. There are people out there today selling what, they, what they're purporting to be heroin, which is actually fentanyl or a fentanyl analog. There are people that are selling pills today that they claim to be a Xanax or a Percocet, but its active ingredient is actually a fentanyl or fentanyl analog. That's what's driving our overdose numbers. Fentanyl is a substance most commonly known as a drug used to tranquilize elephants. This summer, here in Kentucky and across the nation, we've seen police officers and first responders exposed to the drugs during arrest or while treating someone who overdosed. The drug is so powerful it absorbs into their skin and can quickly cause an overdose. And in August, the Metro Police K-9 had to be revived after being exposed to the drug. This is everybody's problem because truly it's coming at a societal cost that's great. We can't ignore it. And I've always been a person who believed and people need to take care of themselves, pull themselves up by the bootstraps. This is how I was raised. This is how many people watching this broadcast of a certain age were raised. But I will tell you the pharmacodynamic effect of an opioid on the human physiology, on the human brain, creates a level of addiction and a level of dependency the likes of which doesn't exist with other things that any of us have exposure to or understanding of. Don'tLetThemDie.com is a website created by the Bevan administration. It's designed to humanize the opioid crisis for those who don't yet see it as a crisis and to offer resources and help to those who do. What does success look like for you in all this? We've got to A, elevate this to a level of awareness that people understand that it is a true epidemic, that it's not just other people 
that if people start being honest and open about it, people will realize there's not a church, there's not a school, there's not a community, and there's hardly a family in Kentucky that isn't directly or indirectly touched by this with a single degree of separation. Action matters. Talk is cheap. And so, whether it's the legislature allocating more dollars, as they have been, to the types of treatment programs, but again, more critically, how do we in enforce the kind of thinking or create an incentive for the kind of thinking, or whatever the case might be, to close that funnel of addiction? How do we limit the number of people who fall into that funnel of addiction? It is a gripping disease that is killing people, and it is destroying the fabric of our communities, and we've got to do something about it.